Hey guys, Michael here. Welcome back to the edit place. And today we're in DaVinci Resolve talking about LUTs, how to create them, how to save them. And is there something better than a LUT that you can use across all of your projects? Spoiler alert, yes. And I'm going to show you that here today. So let's jump right into it. So here I have a look that I've spent some time creating that I'm really happy with. Here's what the raw looked like. Very flat, very basic. Uh, and did a lot of stuff to it. We have um, partially one other LUT in here, got some open effects, got some vignettes, uh, some curves. So what do you do when you've created a look and you wanna do a couple things? Maybe you're trying to create your own LUT pack to sell to others, or for me personally, I like to just save the ones that I'm really happy with because I often shoot in similar styles on different projects. And so I want to create basically my own LUT so that I can use again for later. Now, for those of you who just simply want to export your own LUT so that you can sell, give away, use for yourself, do whatever, here you go. Here's your 30 seconds. Uh, basically, all you do is when you're on the color page, you look here, you look down at the thumbnail uh, in the color grading timeline here, you right click on it, about a third of the way up, you'll see a couple different options for generate 3D LUT. If you want the most detail, I recommend going with the 65 point cube. You do that, you title it, save it wherever you want to save it, hit save. Congrats, you just created a LUT. But see, there's a huge asterisk basically to LUT creation in DaVinci Resolve because as I mentioned, there's a lot of things on this image here, not just things that I've changed in my color primaries and uh, changing colors, but adding open VFX, secondary color corrections, and things like that, which actually do not get saved inside a LUT. So for example, if I go to my LUTs here and I've already saved that other one in here. Uh, so I did that in one of my previous videos about how to import LUTs back into DaVinci Resolve, so you can check that out. Uh, so if I just go in here and apply a new node and apply that LUT to it. Well, it doesn't really look like that. Hmm. Well, one of the key things, the reason that this looks so cool, as in cool tone and this looks warm, is because one of the things is LUTs do not export raw camera settings. So you notice down here at the left that I've actually changed, uh, this was shot at 4,500 and I changed it to 3,752. If I go on this next one here, we can see that all of the raw controls aren't touched because a LUT cannot change a raw camera control. You also see that there's no like anamorphic style light leak sort of looking thing. And that's because that is a open VFX, uh, had a beauty one and lens reflections, which was on here. Uh, so no skin softening, anamorphic little line here. This didn't get any of that. So I'd have to redo it. So again, if you're creating a LUT where all you've done is kind of like what I do on here, what you're seeing now compared to like, this is the raw image. And then this is the graded image. That's just a simple LUT that I've saved because that's just very basic color changes, couple things here and there, um, and then I just slap it on. But if I wanted to save this to then apply to something like this, I'm gonna remove it, go back to raw here. Um, if I wanted something to save, then I would do something a lot more simple that I know you're all expecting, which is I just right click, grab still, and then now, uh, you know, I just go to this and any other clips, I can right click, hit apply grade, and you'll notice that it applied the same node tree, it changed the raw camera controls, and uh, the lens reflections are adjusted to this image, so it falls in line perfectly with my other image. So now that's all great, you know, I have my two clips, everything in my project looks good, but again, what if I wanna save this exact look to use in other projects, other timelines, or even give away to someone else? We know how on the edit page we've talked before about power bins. Well, here you have power grades. And so if we look in the top left hand corner, right under the stills, we see power grades. Now you can create multiple stills albums, multiple power grade albums. So just like anything else, I could, you know, name this one fashion. And what a power grade album compared to a stills is a stills is obviously per project. And these power grade albums will be available anywhere. So for example, if I move this into my fashion power grade, I can go back to my home here, 
go to last week's uh, editing project for the edit place, open this up. Okay, now we can see I'm in a totally different project uh, from another edit place video. And I can go up here and now I see both Power Grade 1 and that Fashion Power Grade and boom, there it is. And again, here's the cool thing, like, like I mentioned before, this is one of my other projects. You can see that I just have an edit place LUT. I create one node and I slap it on there. If I turn this off, this is what the raw image for you know this sort of footage looks like. Slap it on there, it's good to go. But since the other one had so many complex things, I could delete this, make sure this is all reset. And then now if I apply this, go to apply grade from the fashion power grade, you can see that absolutely looks bonkers, but it applied everything exactly how I created it, the exact node tree set up the same way in all the same places. Again, doesn't work for this shot, but you get the point. Now we're back in our current project here. And our final thing is what happens if you want to give this to someone else or even sell it alongside, you know, your own LUT packs, you want to sell a power grade pack. Well, kind of like generating a LUT, it's stupid simple. All you do is right click on the specific still up here at the top and you go export, you keep it as a DPX file. Again, name it whatever you want. So if I was creating a fashion folder, fashion one, hit export. And now instead of a cube file, which is what a LUT generally turns out to be, this is a power grade file. So if someone else is creating a project, um, then they would just go to their stills area, right click, and you would import. Here it is, fashion one, power grade, DPX. It hit import, boom, there it is. They can rename it, put it in their own album, do whatever they want. And if they were to apply to their footage, it's going to have the same exact node tree, all open effects, uh, curves, secondary, everything is going to be in there. And so yeah, so creating power grades is way more versatile than just creating a LUT if you are adding things that uh, are not included in a LUT. So hopefully you guys learned a couple things and got something out of this video. Definitely let me know down in the comments below. Are you going to start using power grades or are you fine totally just using regular LUTs? Thanks so much guys for checking out the edit place and I'll see you guys in the next video.